You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone, from the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam bring you Beaver Dam High School Golden Beaver Boys Basketball. And tonight, it's a Division II playoff showdown, a WIAA regional semifinal. The Portage Warriors are in town to take on your Beaver Dam Golden Beavers. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson with you inside the field house. I'm joined tonight by Corey Sparks. Ninja, a.k.a. Justin Wilski, is our on-site videographer and engineer, assisted once again by Ember Wilski. And Jack Wilski is back at the 1430 ESPN Studios engineering our radio simulcast. We welcome you into this broadcast, which is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game is also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM in Beaver Dam, White Construction, and Pizza Ranch. Welcome into our pregame show, everyone. About uh, 23 minutes away from the tip of this playoff game. It's Beaver Dam and it's Portage and Corey Sparks. Beaver Dam chomping at the bit to get on the court here tonight. They have not played since a week ago yesterday, and that's tough to sit for that long a period of time, but uh, they they will likely be fresh coming into this one tonight. Yeah, it's an interesting element, right, Mike? I mean, you have a Portage team that's coming off a season-high 76-point performance. It's an offense that's really struggled to hit that mark all year. And a Beaver Dam team that's feeling pretty good about the regular season results, 17-7 and seven overall, did well in conference. But like you said, it's been a whole week. I think a big question a lot of people are going to be wondering is, do we see any rust the first couple of minutes? And if so, how do they respond to it? Beaver Dam has had a propensity, especially over recent weeks, to start slowly. Needless to say, you don't want to do that in the postseason. Uh, that really puts you behind the eight ball. So uh, a good start tonight, a good quality start, I think tonight and any night in the playoffs is paramount. Absolutely. I'm looking at like keys to the game for both sides, and I think start strong is huge. You look at this Portage team, when they played Sauk Prairie a couple nights ago, they started it out with a corner three, and it was off to the races from there, right? So with Beaver Dam, if they are a team that typically does start out a little slower, like you said, Mike, they can't afford to do that tonight. When you talk about a team season in whole, you're not talking about the regular season performance. You're talking, did they make it through to the regional final? Did they make it to sectionals? Did they make it to Green Bay? Did they make it to state? And that all starts here, so it's really exciting. Beaver Dam finished the regular season 17 and seven. Portage finished seven and 18, but I'm gonna caution you right now. Do not read into that record by Portage. Do not, I repeat, read into that record because you know what? Portage, probably a lot of people didn't expect them to be here, and they didn't get the memo. Uh, as you mentioned, they knocked off Sauk Prairie on Tuesday night, and that is the same Sauk Prairie team that beat Portage twice during the regular season. In December, Sauk Prairie beat them 49-32, and more recently on February 9th, they beat them by 20, 72 to 52. And you know what those two wins mean now? Absolutely nothing, yeah. because Portage played probably their best game of the season and those two wins the previous game the previous two games didn't mean a thing come Tuesday night and the fun part Mike is all bets are off come the playoffs like you said two losses to that Sauk Prairie team by north of 15 points they start the postseason by beating them not handily but by double digits and they had their best offensive performance if there's ever a time to play your best basketball it's late February into early March in Wisconsin and they're doing it right now boy they uh, they certainly are but, uh, you know, these two teams are, are somewhat familiar with one another. Now, the conference realigned again this season. But prior to the realignment, as the teams are now heading out onto the court for the warm-ups, prior to the current uh, incarnation of Badger Large and Badger Small, Beaver Dam and Portage were actually in the same division and played each other twice a year. And they were developing a, a nice rivalry there. The games were pretty intense that they played. And uh, it's kind of a shame, you know, especially with the close proximity of these two cities, that that still isn't happening. Uh, the last time these two teams played 
was you have to go back to the beginning of the regular season last year or November of 2022. Portage actually beat Beaver Dam in that game 65 to 60. Beaver Dam led by two at the break in that game. They got outscored 40 to 33 in the second half and lost by five. Uh, Jack Jens led the way that night with 13 for Beaver Dam and uh, leading the way for Portage that night, Jonathan Stout had 10, but uh, that's the last time they played. So it's been over a year, uh, you know, almost a year and a half time-wise, calendar-wise, but uh, these teams were, they were developing a nice little rivalry before the shuffle of the conference. Right, so a bit of a gap between the last time these two teams faced off and tonight, but of course, things have a funny way of working out, specifically in the playoffs. They take each other on here in a regional semifinal. You mentioned Jack Jens, he joins JT Call and Cameron Mendoza as the three seniors on this Beaver Dam team, and you can say the same thing for seven seniors on the other end. This is where it gets really interesting, Mike, is you're playing to extend your career here. There's a lot of seniors who are looking at this going, if we don't get this done, I don't put this jersey on again. So there's definitely going to be some emotions flying high, and there's that extra added element of a rivalry that was present not too long ago. The finality of this time of year is, is really something to behold. I, I, I talk about it frequently, especially when we get to March Madness. But, you know, you, you, it's, the season is a grind. I mean, you start in early to mid-November, and you're going nonstop through the end of February, early March. And all of a sudden, for, let's face it, most of the teams, all of, all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, your season's over. Because, let's face it, there's only five teams that are going to end their season with a win, and those are the five state champions. So uh, the finality can be tough this time of year. Uh, it can be a big motivator, you know, because uh, you don't want your career to end, especially if you're a senior. Um, but that is that is what March Madness is all about. I mean, and that's why we call it March Madness. And it's just interesting because that Sauk Prairie team is probably feeling exactly that right now. They expected to be here in Beaver Dam tonight, but just like you said, in the blink of an eye, they are not. Portage shocked them. Portage is looking to shock a team that they're pretty familiar with, you know, relative to years past tonight. And there's a ticket to the regional final tomorrow on the line here. We'll be keeping an eye on the other game going on as well. Yeah, Beaver Dam is the number two seed in the bracket. Portage is the number 10 seed. And as Corey mentioned, the winner of this game moves on to tomorrow's regional championship game and will take on either number nine seed Baraboo or number three seed Wauwatosa West. If Beaver Dam wins, that game tomorrow night at 7 o'clock would be here in this gym. If Portage pulls the upset tonight, they would have to go on the road tomorrow night to the winner of that Wauwatosa West and Baraboo game as Benjamin Beaver <laughs> is in the house. Best mascot there is. That Benny, good favorite. to see you, buddy. He is fired up, ready for playoff basketball tonight inside the field house. I tell you. I don't know if you know this, Corey. Benny has actually done some color with me here on some broadcasts. Oh, really? Yeah, he uh, he's, he's he's very good. And uh, yeah, give him the give him the high five there, Benny. Good to see you, buddy. Boom! I tell you, yeah, he uh, he actually comes up, I and he has. You, I, I should uh, show you one of those broadcasts. Uh, he's got his little board of sayings, and I tell you what, he's he's quite the analyst. Let me tell you. <laughs> there we go. He's got the textbook phrases. You know, I don't know many people who are as. Or I should say less camera shy than Benny. <laughs> Just embracing every moment. There are there. Hey, better him in front of the camera than me. I'll put it that <laughs> way. Right now, we're going to step aside for a timeout. When we come back, we're going to continue our pregame programming. Up next, you'll hear comments from Tim Ladrin. He's the head coach of the Golden Beavers. And we'll play the interview for you right after this two-minute break. We're back in two minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. Summit Ford Beaver Dam, we are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. 
Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest refinancing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our Silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop Silica for Your Home for the best sales, service, and selection. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. And we continue our pregame programming. We're back inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse. Mike Tronson standing by once again with Tim Ladron, head coach of the Golden Beavers. And Tim, congratulations on an outstanding regular season. A lot of good, a lot of good things happening this season. As you look back on it, would you say that uh, you finished maybe where you thought the team might? Did you exceed expectations? What, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I, I think we far exceeded our expectations of what we thought uh, early in the year. Um, you know, we knew we had a good group, but we also knew the schedule was what what it was. It's very difficult, and um, you know, we thought we'd get a little bit above 500 with this group, uh, with the competition we were playing and finishing the top four in the conference. Uh, that would be a really, really good season, and ending up with you know 17 wins and finishing tied for third. I, we far exceeded that, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, certainly happy with our guys and how they've played. Again, you know, we knew we had a good group coming in, but, you know, these guys have done a great job, you know, getting themselves ready even, in, uh, in, you know, preseason and everything else too. Yeah, there's a lot of pundits in the old media that probably didn't think you were going to finish that high. Kind of give you a good satisfaction to prove them wrong there? Yeah, sure. You know, we're, you know, in the basketball world, it's a little different because, you know, a lot of that is based on like, you know, big AAU programs and things like that. And we're a school that has a lot of two and three sport athletes. We have to. And, um, you know, so we don't get a lot of kids playing major AAU. But we, you know, in the past and in, in this year, I think we've done, the kids have done a good job of getting themselves together and playing, playing the right way and really battling. And we've got a great locker room. And, um, you know, I just, you know, sometimes those things are, you know, mentioned in the media because, you know, somebody had a great summer with a major AU program, and we're just, it's not who we are right now. So, uh, but I'm super proud of our guys and what we've done. You bring up a good point. You know, I've, I've run into some coaches over the years that, you know, when you talk about multi-sport athletes, they're always not real crazy about their, their top players playing other sports because there's the risk of injury and whatnot. But uh, I almost think that that's, that's, that's kind of way off base, especially when kids are this age, mm -hmm. that you want them to be, you don't want them to, to specialize too soon. And, and I know you're, you're a real big supporter of all the other programs around here too. Yeah, no question. I mean, I, I, I want our kids to play, um, you know, um, and, and throughout our athletic department, we, we need our better kids playing. Um, and, you know, I think there's, there's a lot to say of, um, you know, like a kid at the, at the plate in the bottom of the seventh is very similar to being at the free throw line late in the game. You know, there's, those are things that you just can't, you know, simulate in practice. You have to be in the moment at the time. And, um, you know, and I think there's a lot of value in that. And, and two, you know, as much as I want our kid, yeah, I mean, I love our kids play basketball every day and, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of value in, in you know, in being those, doing those other things. And, and they got to be high school kids too. And, uh, and, and, and be with their friends and enjoy things and compete at a certain level and different stuff. So, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly for the three sport. Well, you guys haven't played in over a week, so you've got to be chomping at the bit to get on the court. Sounds like, from what I'm hearing, it was a pretty productive week in, in, on the practice court. Yeah, it was. You know, we had that bad one down at Oregon. And after watching the film, it actually was worse than what I thought. Um, and, you know, but it allowed us to take a look at the film um, and really dial some stuff in on both ends that weren't very good. Um, maybe, you know, and having the eight days to, to, to do that and, and figure that out, I think really helped us. I think our guys feel pretty good about where we're at. 
you've got Portage coming in here tonight, and probably a lot of people didn't think they'd be in this round, uh, but they're here, and I'm sure that probably got your attention. Yeah, they played great on Tuesday. They were outstanding. Um, you know, they're physical, they're athletic, you know, Stout, you know, I think he had 30 points for him. He's averaging about eight a game normally, or something eight, nine, somewhere in there. And, um, you know, but he, he had a great game, and, and he had eight threes. And, you know, they got a couple of really athletic kids that can really play basketball. And, um, you know, they deserve to win that game. They all played Sox. I, I think Sox a great team. I think they're really well coached, and uh, Portis beat them. How important is it? Well, every game it's important, but how important tonight to come out, get off to a really good start, especially because you had to sit for a couple of days? Yeah, I think it is. You know, obviously we've had that kind of bug of getting off to bad starts. And then I always think that while the buy is great, um, and it is, um, you know, there's always the disadvantage of, you know, Portage has played a playoff game and we haven't yet. Mm -hmm. So there is that piece too. So getting off to a quick start would be nice. Um, let everybody's jitters kind of calm down a little bit and, and just re come back to relying on playing good basketball. I know that they redid, reshuffled the conference uh, this year. But you had kind of a little bit of a rivalry going yeah. with Portage before the reshuffle. Yeah, for sure. It was, you know, and there was a lot of those games that get pretty chippy and pretty physical. So, uh, you know, and our guys are aware of that. And, you know, these, I know they've, you know, especially our senior kids have played a lot of these guys coming up and you know, that type of thing. So there's certainly some familiarity there. And, yeah, and that was one of the things with the Badger when, the, when it realigned that I didn't like is, you know, we had went from the Little Ten and then to the Badger and, you know, the little ten, obviously, we lost some rivalries. And then the Badger North, we started getting kind of a rivalry at Portage. And it was, you know, some pretty, you know, it's said pretty exciting games and whatever. And, and then we lost that when we went to small and big. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, our guys will be ready to go for that for sure. I am looking forward to it, Tim. Good luck to you and the boys tonight. Thanks for your time, as always. Do appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, Mike. All right. That's Tim Ladrin, head coach of the Golden Beavers. We'll step aside back right after this on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed with a last call for all you Hemi engine muscle car enthusiasts. The Hemi engine is going away, but we got a couple of beauties that just arrived for some lucky buyers. Take five grand off a brand new 23 Dodge Charger Daytona RT and B5 Blue or a Challenger RTTA package in the beautiful and iconic Plum Crazy. For US UV buyers, Jeep Grand Cherokee Limiteds with the black appearance package, only $46,678. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. The winter weather can play havoc on your hands and hair. Fear not, the folks at Wonder Nails and Spa has just a ticket for you. Call 887-4374 and let them pamper you. Let them chase away those winter blues. Let's talk hair. Long, beautiful hair. Shine and glint. Whoa, 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 I digress. The team of cost cutters will put a shimmer and shine to your mood and their retail products are the best in the business. Call 885-0437 today. That's why you hear everyone say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center and you should too. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. As a realtor, there is such joy in driving past one of our clients' houses that is now the place they call home. Be it a first-time home buyer, a relocation to our community, or someone upsizing or downsizing, we are passionate about the place you call home and meeting your wants and needs each step of the way. We sell the houses, you make it a home. Questions? Give us a call. 920-219-9212. Kladowski Real Estate, your trusted real estate advisors. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show. Mike Tronson, Corey Sparks back inside the Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse getting you ready for this Division II regional semifinal. Beaverdam and Portage, right now our national anthem.
our national anthem here inside the field house. Let's give you the starting lineups first for Portage. The Warriors are coached by Darren Berger. The guards are Keegan Hooker, a six foot two inch senior along with Elias Vera, 6'3 junior, Griffin Garrigan, a 6'1 senior, and Jonathan Stout, 6'1 and a senior. Rounding out the starters for Portage, at forward is River Meyerdirk, six foot five inch senior. So again, for the Warriors, it's Keegan Hooker, Elias Vera, Griffin Garrigan, Jonathan Stout, and River Meyerdirk. Now the starters for Beaver Dam, coached by Tim Ladron. The guards are E.J. Salatel, 6'2 and a sophomore, along with J.T. Call, a 6'1 senior, and Parker Stoby, a 5'9 inch junior. Forwards are Jack Jen, 6'3 senior, along with Cameron Mendoza, a 6'3 senior. Again, for Beaver Dam, it's E.J. Salatel, J.T. Call, Parker Stoby, Jack Jens and Cameron Mendoza. Portage tonight, for those of you listening on radio that can't see it, are wearing black jerseys and shorts with white numbers and orange and white trim. Beaver Dam's in the home, white jerseys and shorts, the green numbers and the green and gold trim. In the first half, Beaver Dam will go right to left as Corey and I see it, and that means that Portage goes left to right across your radio dial or your daily Dodge TV video screen. Well, when you're faced with a challenge, how you respond determines the real winners. Rural Mutual believes there's something more important than just winning or losing a game. They believe that the team, school, and fans who support their athletes with dignity and class are the true champions. Rural Mutual is the proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Insurance Sportsmanship Award since it started in 1965. From football to volleyball to soccer to tennis, the award recognizes more than team sportsmanship, It recognizes that sportsmanship matters in your community as well. Visit ruralmutual.com slash WIAA and see how our team and your community can work together to be true champions. Don't forget, you can send us an email tonight during the broadcast, sports at dailydodge.com, sports at dailydodge.com. You know the drill. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. Maybe you want to say hello to Corey Sparks or Ninja. We'd love to hear from you. We'll give you a shout-out during the broadcast tonight. But Corey, we are just about ready to get this thing going. Almost a year and a half since these two teams have faced off, and I don't think you could have a better stage set, Mike. It's it's going to be an exciting one. Is it neon night for the uh, student section uh, For the Portage student okay. section, it is. I can't see what the uh, student section uh, theme is for Beaver Dam. They're down to our right here. But here we go, and it's going to be River Meyer Dirk to jump at its center for Portage. Cameron Mendoza does the honors for Beaver Dam. There's the whistle. Balls up in the air. Warriors control the tap. This game is underway, and the Beaver Dam playoff run is underway here in March of 2024. And there's a lob pass. Meyer Dirk, and he lost it out of bounds. And actually, well, because there was used foul. They're calling a foul here on Beaver Dam. That took all of 12 seconds. And the first foul of the game is on JT Call. And that's his first, the team's first. It goes without saying, Corey, you got to stay out of foul trouble in a game like this. Yeah, we talked about that physicality. We'll see how quickly it comes into play. And the games between these two teams have been physical. And there's a traveling violation on Stout. And so that turnover will give it to Beaver Dam. We have played all of 17 seconds, my friends. <laughs> two pauses. No score. And uh, here comes Stoby across the timeline. And he's met there by Jonathan Stout. Sends it over to J.T. Call, high on the left, worked on by Griffin Garrigan. Now Mendoza feeds Stoby. He'll try a three. It is short. Rebound was, well, Jen's got a hand on it, but he could not corral it cleanly, picked up by Meyerdirk. And this is Vera, Elias Vera, to the top of the key for Stout. Jonathan Stout, he had a big night against uh, Sauk Prairie on Tuesday. He averages eight points a game. There's a three. Oh, and it's good from the top of the arc. John, and I just right on cue, right he heard me talking cue. about him. He averages about eight a game. I think he had something like 28. He's coming tw- off a 30 bomb. A 30 bomb. Okay, yep. I was close. I was I, I undercut him. Jens for three, in and out, no good. Tip back up by Cameron Mendoza. He was right there to tip up the miss. And it's a 3-2 Portage lead. We're a minute and 13 seconds into the contest, and that brings the Beaver Dam student section to their feet as the Golden Beavers are on the board. All right, this is Portage going to work. Keegan Hooker giving it now to Vera. Vera between the rings. Setting a screen was Garrigan. Vera tries a three ball, and he got it. Oh, my. Elias Vera 
from downtown Beaver Dam. That's exactly how they started that last game, Mike. A couple threes. Holy cow. Yeah, and they were they were hot from three-point land in the win over Soft Prairie. Yep. Six to two, Portage leading. There's an underhanded pass. Nice shot up by Jens. No good, but a foul. And how about the nice underhanded pass to get it to him from Mendoza? And uh, Jens, with an all-expenses-paid trip to the free-throw line to try and get Beaver Dam a little bit closer. Curious to see how the board battle goes today, Mike, because usually Beaver Dam is on the smaller side. If you look up and down the roster, these teams are about the same size. First free throw is up, and it's no good for Jack Jens. Jens, he is a 69% free throw shooter. He's averaged just under seven points a game this season. Three rebounds, two assists per game for one of the seniors on this team. J squared, Jack Jens, second one, no good. Rebound, knocked off the backboard, and who's going to grab it? It's going to be grabbed by Meyer Dirk, throws it ahead to Stout. Here's Jonathan Stout. Muscling his way down to the left baseline area. Stops near the block. Turns around, shoots over Stobie. Off the rim, no, and Stobie gets the rebound. 15.50 to go, first half. Pass to Jens, left baseline, and there's a hooker tried to knock it out of his hands, and instead he got body, and that's a foul on hooker, and the Portage first foul of the game for them. Yeah, he tried to bite on the pass near the baseline there. Just a little too aggressive, and that's already two fouls early on Portage. First personal on Hooker's second team. I think I said first. It's actually the second. Call, throws it in. It was over the hands of Jens. He got it from going into the backcourt. And this is Call. Back to Jens inside the free throw line. Kicks it out. Left of the circle. There's Stobie. Down to the corner. Pass to Jens. He'll try a three. Off the rim, no. And the rebound scooped up by Stout. Jonathan Stout leads it ahead. He's guarded closely there by Stobie. Pass to the... Left side, with it there is Vera. Now a shot up, no good. Rebound for Jens off the miss by Portage. Two minutes, 46 seconds gone. Here's a deep three for Salatel. Bullseye! EJ Salatel with some arc under that shot. Six to five, Beaverdam is within one. And the clock running, we've played exactly three minutes of the first half. This Division II regional semifinal. Hooker for three, in and out. It was halfway down, it kicked back out, and that is Call with a rebound. Fires it ahead in transition. Jens going in, left side. Missed the layup, and he got fouled. And Hooker puts his hands in the air and says, what, what? You're he gonna get me? He did not agree with that. He did not agree with it, and he's and he just got teed up, I think, too. Yep. They just teed him up. He said something. Yep, and boy, you have to keep your emotions in check in any game, but it's especially here in the playoffs, so yeah, he, he didn't like the call, which, you know, understandable, but he said something, and the official did not care for it. Yeah, kind of threw his hands up in the air. There was no call there, and then you yep. saw him turn around and maybe said something a little too loud. Jens will shoot the technical. First one is good. Jack Jens ties the game at 6, 14.48 to go in the first half. We're just underway, a couple of minutes in. Mike Tronson, Corey Sparks. Justin Wilski, Ember Wilski, Jack Wilski. And the second free throw is good for Jens. We have a big crew for this one today. Now he gets two more because he's not only did he shoot the tactical, but he got fouled. And there's three of three for J squared. Oh, this is huge. Eight to six now. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And they're going to get the ball. Next one's on the way. Fourth and final wow. three. He got them all. He got four free throws, made them all. Nine to six, so Beaver Dam now vaults in front by a three three spot, and as I said, they get possession, and Call's going to inbound on the baseline down below us. Looks like Keegan Hooker is taking a seat after that. He's going to have to talk things over, maybe cool down a little bit. It's a mental error just about four minutes into this game. Long way to go, though, and this is Stoby. Leaving it off for Call, return feed to Stoby, left side in the corner. Up to call, around the horn, right side, they go to Jens. Jens into the lane, to Mendoza, left corner three, off the rim, no. Rebound tipped into the lane, Stoby tracks it down. And his pass is tipped, trying to get it to Jens, and it's going to be stolen by Portage. And that was David Nadolski, 5'8", junior, that's out there now for head coach Darren Berger. He had checked in a little while ago. And we've got a whistle as Vera is contacted. Goodness, no love lost between these two teams. Oh no, Six no, Six combined not. fouls already? And we're not even four minutes into the game. <laughs> the aggression's here. The intensity is, is in the arena right now. It's going to be that kind of a night. 
We're glad you're with us, though. If you couldn't make it to the gym, good crowd on hand here. Here's a baseline drive, kicked back out of there by Nadalski. With it there is Garrigan. Garrigan finds Stout. He'll try a three ball. Off the rim, it's no good. Offensive rebound. Oh, he had it momentarily, did, did Garrigan, but lost it. And Bieberdam brings it back the other way. That is Call. Up to Mendoza, top of the silo. He'll give it back to Call, coming around from the far side. Whips it out to Jens for three on the right. Short. Did not dry iron. Call got it out of midair, though. He'll try a three in the left corner. Yes! JT Call knocking down a triple. 12 to 6. Beaverdam doubling up Portage. 13.38 to go in the first half. We've got a timeout. And this timeout is brought to you by our friends at McKinstry's Home Furnishings. They're located in downtown Beaverdam. It's a 30-second timeout. So we're going to keep it right here on this 30-second timeout. We've got an email to get to. This one says, let's go Beavers, cheering on JT. Coach Call and all of the Golden Beavers from Nina. That's from Uncle Brad and Aunt Maggie checking in on the broadcast tonight. So glad you're with us on a Friday. And uh, if you would like to join us via the email, here's what you do. You send us a message to sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. We'd love to hear from you. We will give you a shout out on the broadcast tonight. 13.39 left in the first half, and we said Beaver Dam needed a good start, and I would say mission accomplished here. Uh, Corey? Yeah, 10-0 run right now, Mike. So this is Vera finding Nadolski back up now to Garrigan. They go over to Stout. Now Nadolski near the top of the key, guarded heavily by Call. Lob pass over to Garrigan. Griffin Garrigan worked on defensively by Mendoza. He's into the lane. Underhanded shot, and that one hit. Well, it's going the other way. Did somebody get a hand on that shot, I, or did it just hit the underside of the backboard? I, I couldn't quite tell. I think it was the latter, yeah. Uh, and because the, the, the funny deflection that it took, I didn't think somebody got a hand on it. But there was a foul, too, by the way, on River Meyer Dirk. That's his second already. And that's the fifth team foul on Portage. We're not even five minutes into the game. So fouls are mounting. Cole! He took it in himself. He faked a pass, and the little head fake, he takes it in for two more. He's got five, and it's 14 to six. Beaverdam on top, under 13 minutes left until intermission. How about that move? Froze his defender. He did. Little head nod and hesitation, and then he goes in uncontested. Ball knocked loose. It was a kicked. They blew the whistle. And now we have substitutes coming in. In for Beaver Dam is Jeff Freund, six foot one inch junior. And let's see, checking in for Portage is Aiden Warfield, 6'3 junior. Where's number 15? That's Vera. Giving it now to Stout. Jonathan Stout on the right elbow. Back to. Warfield now kicks it out to Stout for three. Off the back iron, it's no good. Mendoza the rebound. And we had two bodies hit the deck behind the play. This is call right corner three. Money. JT hitting that three ball. He's got eight points. Timeout. A full timeout by Portage. Brought to you again by Reed, by McKinstry's Home Furnishings located in downtown Beaver. Now let's take a one-minute break. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Jerry's Automotive in Beaver Dam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Cheer. Now cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it is commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Beaverdam leads Portage 17-6, 12-15 to go first half. 
Warriors inbounding off the timeout. Beaver Dam in the midst of a 15-0 run here, Corey. It's insane, and mostly led by JT Cawley's last few possessions. Offensive rebounds, threes, assists. We'll see if Portage can stop the bleeding a little bit. A three ball from the right side. No, it's off the rim, no good for Warfield. And here come the Golden Beavers. Parker Blank checked in. 5'11 sophomore. Bounce pass, Mendoza underhands it to call in the corner. Up to Stobie for three, no good off the rim. Mendoza tried to get the rebound, but Warfield actually was standing there and got the deflection. And now here's Elias Vera giving it now to Nadolski. David Nadolski feeds Warfield and a pass stolen by Call. Call back the other way, going in and knocked out of his hands at the last second by Garrigan, and I tell you what, quick hands by Garrigan denied what probably would have been another layup for JT Call. I'll give credit where credit's due. Garrigan dealing with a crafty JT Call, went behind the back, looked like he had an easy two, if not drawing what would have been foul number six from Portage, but he stripped him clean. Inbounds pass, Salatel left corner three, too strong. Rebound, they're fighting for it. Garrigan rips it away. And here come the Warriors down by 11 with just over 11 minutes to go in the half. Stout elevates. Oh, tough shot with a defender right there. Jonathan Stout, are you kidding me? He's got five, 17 to eight. That's a badly needed bucket for the Warriors. Just going to say, if somebody was going to stop that run, Mike, it was oh. going to be Jonathan Stout. My goodness. Defender right there in, the, in his grill. And yeah. he just elevates and shoots over. In his face. All right, this is Blank up inside the timeline. Blank. Jen sets a screen, blank, bounce pass out to Salatel in three-point land. He goes into the lane, puts a hook shot up, and he got it. Oh, my, EJ making a tough shot look easy. 19-8, to eight, Beaver Dam leads, Stout, top of the key, feeds it over to Vera. He'll try a three on the right wing, and that one hit the backboard, and the rebound grabbed by Calls. He clears the glass, Call, bounce pass, blank to the right corner. Freund down there, back up to Call. He sidesteps the defender, sidearms it back to Freund. He's inside the bubble. Pass to the baseline, Jens gets by the defender, missed the layup, it wouldn't go off the rim, and the rebound for Vera. Now here is Garrigan at the other end, finding Warfield. Warfield, top of the key, back to Nadolski, whips it over to the left side. Garrigan there, guarded by Blank, and actually Blank forced it out of bounds. Hey, we got a message here, uh, Beaverdam girls basketball coach Braden Went is tuned into the broadcast tonight, and I tell you what, Braden, looking forward to tomorrow afternoon when the Beaver Dam girls take on Pewaukee in a sectional final at Watertown. We're going to have that game on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam, 4 o'clock tomorrow, 335 thereabouts for the pregame. And I tell you what, Braden, congratulations to you and the girls. We're looking forward to it tomorrow. Oh, what a win, right? Yesterday especially. Over Watertown, third victory over Watertown this year for the Golden Beaver girls who are one win away from a return trip to the Rush Center in Green Bay. Here's a turnover, Jens, and then he threw it away. And Garrigan got it back and then got fouled. Oh, you get a turnover, you force one, but then you turn it over yourself. Oh, that hurts. That's and one of those situations. Whoo. You don't need to be in a rush there, right? You've got all the time in the world. There's no shot clock. Just a couple bodies swarming around him, and he threw away an errant pass. At the line, number three, Griffin Garrigan. All right, so this is Garrigan. First free throw is going to rattle home for Griffin Garrigan. Griffin Garrigan, 81.8% from the free throw. That's pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. Six points a game he averages, three rebounds, two assists per contest. And next one's on the way. Line drive free throw is good for Garrigan. He got them both 19 to 10. So the Beaver Dam lead is at nine with Nine and a half minutes to go until intermission. Beaverdam used a 15-0 run to vault out in front in this one. They had, they had trailed 6-2 very early, but uh, they got things going, and a technical foul really was a big spot. Here's Salatel, deep three. Splash! E.J. Salatel from the parking lot. He's got eight points, including two threes. There was nothing cheap about that one. It's 22 to 10, Golden Beavers. No hesitation there either. He uncorked it as soon as he caught it. Garrigan sending it cross court. They go around the horn. With it here is Hooker. Hooker running into a double team, lost the ball. Oh, wait. oh they called a foul. Woo, that's a break. That's a big break for Hooker and the Warriors. It's about to be a fast break for Beaver Dam yes. before that whistle was blown. By the way, a 5'11 sophomore, Donovan Navoni, had checked in 
just a little while ago for Portage. He's out there now wearing number 24. Fouls on Beaverdam's Parker Stobie, his first, team's fourth. And this, are there free throws here? What do we got? The officials now in discussion. And they're saying it was on the floor. So there's no, I didn't think there was going to be free throws there, but. And I hear some of the uh, Portage fans near us that are, didn't agree with the call, but. Portage has got the ball, and this is going to be Navoni to inbound. 8.50 left to play in the opening stanza. And they get it in to Meyer Dirk. Meyer Dirk looking right corner for Navoni. Bounce pass into the block. There's Hooker. Hooker double team. Kicks it back to Navoni. Driving. Traveled. They got him for a walk. And with 8.39 to go in the opening stanza, Beaverdam gets it back, leading by a dozen, 22 to 10. This team looks calm, cool, and collected right now. A bit of a slow start, but that start was only a couple minutes, so looking comfortable here. They're in good shape right now, and if you're Beaverdam now, the, the mantra becomes you keep your foot on the gas. Right. Because we've seen teams mount big rallies and... Blank got fouled as he took off into the lane. 8.18 to go. First half. I'm not ready to call it chippiness yet, Mike, but we'll use the word physicality for the first 10 minutes of this one. That's definitely been present. Salatil off the inbounds pass. Three ball. Got it from the left corner. Rainbow three for EJ. 25 to 10. Golden Beavers up 15 now as we approach the eight minute mark and counting of the first half. Beaver having a 1-3-1 here, Corey. They will employ that from time to time. See if they can break it and go to the high post. Oh, Salatel almost got a piece of that. Garrigan kicks it out, left side three ball, yes! That's a three for Keegan Hooker. His first bucket, he shoots 35% from behind the arc, so that's fairly decent percentage. 25-13. Call falling it on. Sends it up top to Stobie for three. It's off the rim. No. Long rebound. Went out to call. He was waiting for it right there as he got the ricochet. And now here's Salatel, top of the bubble. One hands it over to Blank. Three-point land on the right. He's inside the bubble. Sends it out. Long three. Call. Got it! From Horicon. JT Call. His third trifecta. He's got 11 points, and it's 28-13. Beaverdam in front with 7.08 to go until intermission. Wow. I think he and EJ are having a furthest three-pointer contest right now. They are, uh, yeah, they're not bashful <laughs> by any means. This is Hooker. Hooker to the right corner. Three ball wide open there, and it's too strong for Navoni. Out of bounds it goes, and it will go back to the Golden Beavers with 6.48 remaining in the first half. Got an email here. This is Natalie Jens checking in from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, cheering for her brother Jack Jens and the rest of the Beavers. Natalie, thank you for the email. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Former Beaverdam standout, Natalie Jens. We've got uh, another email. Go Beavers watching the game from the Twin Cities, getting ready for Eli's senior day and a gopher game tomorrow. That's from Nate, Tiffany, and Abe Wilkie all checking in. The Wilkies tuned in from my hometown of Minneapolis, Minnesota. I was just up there a couple of weeks ago, went to a Gopher game, courtesy of Eli Wilkie, who got me some comp tickets. There we go. He's a student manager, so he, he, he knows people. <laughs> Blank for three. It's raining down threes. Parker Blank knocking down from behind the arc, and it's 31-13. My goodness. Beaver Dems opened up an 18-point advantage. There's a magnet at the bottom of that hoop right now. Everything is falling. Wow. Well, you said uh, you had to see if Beaver Dam would have any rust. Uh, <laughs> no, there was no rust, Corey. No sign of After it. After sitting for eight days, there's a shot in and out, no good for Vera. Call gets the rebound. This is EJ back to call. Call. Oh, I thought he was going to shoot from half court, just pretty much. Thought better of it. Bounce pass now to Stoby. Man to man D for Portage. This is Blank corralling a pass in between the rings he goes. Feeds Stoby on the left wing side. Beaverdam can be patient here with an 18-point lead. Don't have to force anything. 
Bounce pass intended for Blank, and it was knocked out. And Beaverdam is going to keep possession. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you want to send us an email, this one says, watching the game from the camper tonight in Westfield. Coming home tomorrow for the girls' sectional final. Go Beavers. That's from Dan McDermott. Dan, thank you for the uh, check-in tonight. We had a whistle and a foul on the Golden Beavers, so we're going to go the other way. This one says, Brett and Jody rooting for JT and the entire team. They says, we sure do appreciate your professional and enthusiastic broadcast. Thanks, Mike, for making every game exciting. The uh, Styles and Rechecks are super fans. And thanks to the rest of the crew and the sponsors for making it possible. Go Beavers from Brett and Jody Recheck. Shot off the rim, no good. Beaverdam gets the rebound. And in fast break, here's Jens. Digging it out to Salatel for three. Bullseye! Oh, my! EJ Salatel, another three. Timeout Portage. It's a 30-second timeout with 5.03 to go in the first half. And this is not a misprint. It's 34 to 13. Beaverdam now leads by 21. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm counting up. There's eight made three-pointers by Beaverdam in this first half, Corey. I don't want to call it so early, but this might be the best offensive performance they've had so far. If you take just this sample size alone, I mean, Beaverdam's a team that's had to play smaller more times than not this year, right? We kind of talked about them having similar size up and down the roster with Portage. If you look at JT Call and EJ Solitel alone, that backcourt, 25 points between those two. Majority of which via the three. I don't know the last time they've missed one. <laughs> like everything feels like it's fallen right now. So phenomenal start. Like you said, Mike, keep the foot on the gas pedal. This is still the postseason and there's a long way to go. Five minutes left in the first half. Clock running as we're back to action. Hooker giving it to Vera. He's double teamed up near the timeline. Gets rid of it. Over to Stout. He'll try a three on the right side. In and out. It's no good. And Call tracking down the rebound in the far corner. Sends it ahead to EJ and Salatel now. Return feed to Call over to Mendoza. Mendoza near sideline. Finds Salatel. He's got a defender nearby. Bounce pass into the lane. Mendoza kicks it out. Wide open. Jens for three on the right. Too strong. In and out. Rebound Mendoza. Another offensive board. Out to Call for a step back three. That's off the rim. No. And Hooker finally gets the defensive rebound for the Warriors with 4.22 left in the half. A couple heat checks there. <laughs> <laughs> you think, huh? Here's Vera, trying to go up and under. Scoop shot, no. Tip back up, that won't go. Another rebound, Meyer Dirk's put back is no good. Meyer Dirk had two chances at it, couldn't get it to go. Jens to Mendoza, he's at the top of the bubble. Out to Jens, right side goes baseline, underhands it to the corner for Salatel, driving out of there. Just under four minutes left in the half as he now directs traffic and Calls out of play. Here's Mendoza at the free throw line. Bounce pass into the block. Call. Nice backdoor cut by Jens. Took the pass. Missed the shot. Got his own rebound. And he was blocked on the putback. And here comes Vera. Through traffic. Off balance shot. Counted and a foul. Oh, Elias Vera. He ran into some congestion on Interstate 90. And he was able to get through it. And now it's an and one. A three point opportunity as that's the second personal on Mendoza. Team fouls are now even at six apiece with 3.38 to go in the half. Yeah, nice job by the leading scorer. Vera averaging a little over 13 a game, maneuvering through traffic, took the contact, made the basket. All it takes is one to really swing the momentum. You just got to back it up now. Vera, free throw, no good. Rebound, Jens. So Beaverdam has it up 34 to 15. 19 point lead. For the home team. Remember, remember when it was 6-2 to two Portage? Yeah. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Call fakes a three left corner, and he traveled as he took off and tried to go baseline. So that will give it back to the Warriors. And see, so you got another email here. And uh, let's see what we got here. This is from Sean Medeiros. And uh, he says, oh, yeah, please point out that Natalie Jens just went over 1,000 collegiate points. Congratulations, Natalie. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Sean, for pointing that out, by the way. Why didn't you just point it out? You did, so <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, uh, I saw that online uh, the other day, as a matter of fact. And here is a steal. Salatel going to go take it in for a lap. Got it. EJ took it coast to coast off the steal. 36 to 15. And we've got 243 left in the half. 
There's a shot up, and it's not going to go for Warfield. Rebound for Mendoza. Boy, Beaverdam's defense has been really, really good here in this first half. And travel on Mendoza, so it'll go back to the Warriors. But, uh, yeah, you look at it here, and Fortage with only five field goals in the half, and three of them have been from beyond the arc. So, I mean, it's been a struggle, especially in close for the Warriors. They have not had much to speak of from uh, inside the arc. Yeah, this is a team that's been living and dying by the three especially looking back to last matchup. It worked on Tuesday. Keegan Hooker just walked. He got called for a travel. Another email here. It says, let's go, Beavers. We have the uh, Big Cheese Wheelchair Basketball Tournament in Greenfield this weekend. That's from our good friend Taylor Post. Taylor, congratulations. Good luck. I know it's been a uh, fun season for you on the uh, circuit, and good luck this weekend. Let us know how you're doing. Here's a three for Freund, and that one is off the rim. No, Salatel, the offensive board, put back off the glass, counted for EJ. EJ, let's see here. I've got, and we've got a, I looked down, what did I miss as I looked down to knock? Beaverdam's going to get it back? Oh, okay. bad inbound pass. All right. I also blinked the same time you did. We both missed it. That's By the right. way, EJ Salatel has 18 points in this first half. Goodness. And four three-point baskets. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's a day's good. work right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> 38 to 15, Golden Beavers lead the Warriors. 2:01 to go in the half. Lob pass in, taken by EJ. Well, he had a defender Vera all over him, but he maintained possession. Call, looking down to Blank. Blank, right of the circle, sends it up to JT. Fires it back to the right side for Blank, and Blank underhands it to a cutting Salatel. He stripped. Stripped by Stout. Stout one on three the other way, trying to go through traffic, missed the shot. And Cole got the loose ball as they were fighting for that ricochet. And then Cole ran into a defender, and he got tripped up. The defender went down to the, the floor, and that's going to be a foul and a bonus situation for Call and the Golden Beavers. Yep, remember that rivalry we talked about. Yep, we're starting and, to see that And now. Warfield is limping as he heads back to the Portage bench. And let's hope he's all right, but he is limping noticeably as he, he walks off under his own power, and they have to send a sub in to replace him, and that is going to be Luke Kreisiger, six foot three inch senior. And here's Call shooting the bonus, one plus one, and he got the front end. JT Call now with 12 points. And another one on the way for a call. Money calls a 76% free throw shooter. Leading scorer on the team this year at 17 and a half per ball game. 40 to 15. Beaverdam is in front with a minute 25 and counting left in the half. And this is a pass to the left side for Garrigan. Griffin Garrigan out there in three point land. Now feeds Nadolski, fires it right side for Kreisiger. Kreisiger, Max Lidke's out there for Beaver Dam. He just checked in. Now Nadolski, a right corner three. It's off the rim, no good. Rebound for Jens. Max Lidke had checked in. He's a 6'3 junior. Getting some minutes off the bench here. He's a 6'3 uh, player and uh, one of the taller players on this Beaver Dam team as we talked about how they typically have been undersized in a lot of matchups. 44 seconds left in the half. Beaverdam leading 40 to 15. And this is Blank. Blank just backing up to the time. And Beaverdam can just hold for the last shot here. Why not? I mean, I you've got a 25-point yep. lead. Oh, yeah. Here is a pass. Back door, Lidke. What a pass. He was wide open waiting for it on the left side. And Lidke... Makes it 42 to 15. Beaverdam, 15 seconds left in the half. Ball finds the new guy. Amazing how that works. Instant offense, they call him. He comes in, <laughs> he, here's a ball out of bounds. And it stops the clock with seven seconds remaining in this opening half of play. Amron Mendoza coming back in. Call's going to head out for the final seven seconds. And Portage will inbound on the baseline to our right. Garrigan has it. 
up to Vera. Three seconds, two, step back, three at the horn. No good off the rim, and that's the way the first half is going to come to an end here at Beaverdam High School Fieldhouse. At the break in this Division II regional semifinal, it is Beaverdam 42 and Portage 15. Stay with us. We're going to take a four-minute break. We're back for the halftime report in four minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaverdam. All right, four minutes here. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of AirCare and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richard's Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richard's Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richard's Insurance? To find out, call Richard's Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richard's Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. At Preferred Dental Partners, our core values are more than just something we put on our wall. They're something we live out. Core value number two is the wow experience. This means that from the moment you walk in the door until the time you leave, we want to provide an experience for our patients that is unlike anything you've had before. There are lots of choices of dentists, and we never want anyone to feel they have to be here. We want them to choose to be here because they feel heard, welcomed, and well cared for. If you want to see what the wow experience is about, call or text Preferred Dental Partners today. Here at Pizza Ranch, we'd like to thank our Swedish friends for bringing the buffet to America. They called it the smorgasbord, but it was a success anyway. So we started our own buffet and loaded it up with pizza, chicken, sides, salads, and cactus bread. And you can even request any pizza you want anytime you visit. We call it Buffet Your Way because smorgasbord your way, well, that doesn't rhyme at all. Pizza Ranch. Mm Mmm-mmm. Check out your local Pizza Ranch in Beaver Dam, Watertown, or Waupon, or check out PizzaRanch.com. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all Beaver Dam athletes. While at home watching high school sports, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy comfort studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. The comfort in your home is too important to trust to just anyone. With over 75 years in the industry, Surefire Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to bring our community the heating and cooling services you deserve. Expect nothing short of excellence in service, installation, and 24-7 emergency service. As a premier Lennox dealer, we carry the best in equipment to bring you and your home peace of mind. Schedule your annual maintenance or claim your free in-home estimate today, 920-485-4883. Surefire, keeping what's important comfortable since 1947. And once again, tonight's game here on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. 
Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaver Dam, White Construction, and Pizza Ranch. Well, the Beaver Dam Unified School District's monthly Board of Education business meetings are streamed live on the district's YouTube page. Visit BDUSD.org for Board of Education information and details on upcoming meetings. Well, there are over 20 studies, count them 20 studies, that support the benefits of low-fat chocolate milk as a recovery beverage. Low-fat chocolate milk contains the right 3-to-1 mix of carbs and protein scientifically shown to help refuel and restore muscles. Pro athletes have been relying on chocolate milk for years because they have, been, they have seen the benefits in their own performance and recommend drinking milk to others. Learn more at gonna-need-milk.com, brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. What a first half for Beaver Dam, Corey. They lead it 42-15 over Portage at the break. I'm in shock, to be honest with you, but if you think about it, I would call this game kind of a microcosm of Beaver Dam's entire season. You had the great pregame interview with Tim Ladron saying, you know, the expectation was be a bit over 500, look to finish in the top half of the conference. They blew that out of the water as Benny almost makes a half-court shot. <laughs> uh, but we also look at Wisports.net. I had them they had Beaver Dam projected to finish sixth in the Badger Large. They blew that out of the water. Whatever we expected coming into this game was not this. Like 42 to 15, a 27 point lead. For a few minutes there, seemingly every three pointer was falling. The backcourt has been phenomenal, and they're going up against a team that's coming off of their best offensive performance of the year against Sauk Prairie. And what have they done? They've shut the three down. Even they, when they played the 1 3 1 defense and there were some open corners, everyone's closing out cleanly. Like, you could not have chalked up a better first half on offense and defense both sides of the ball for Tim Ladron's squad and the scoreboard is indicative of that so phenomenal but as you said before I'll stick to that keep the foot on the gas do not let up here looking at the first half scoring for Beaver Dam they were paced by EJ Salatel EJ in fact leads all scorers in the game with 18 points including four three-point baskets Meanwhile, J.T. Call had 13 points, including three from behind the arc. Four points for Jack Jens, all coming from the free throw line. Parker Blank hit a triple, so he finished the half with three. Cameron Mendoza, Max Lidke, two points each for the Golden Beavers. Meanwhile, for Portage, they were paced by Elias Vera and Jonathan Stout, five points each. Three points for Keegan Hooker. He had a triple in the first half, and Griffin Garrigan rounded out the scoring for Portage with two Portage had a 6-2 lead very early. Beaver Dam then proceeds to go on a 15 to nothing run. And, uh, boy, they've never really looked back because here we are at halftime, and it's 42-15. That's been the story from there, Mike, right? It was off to the races. EJ Salatel has such an amazing story. I talked to Tim Laddern about a month ago, and I said, wow, that's a really significant point jump, right? He's averaging 16.5 per game. It was four per game his freshman year. And he informed me, well, EJ, you know, had a huge knee injury in eighth grade. So... Freshman year was one year of recovering from that. They're professional athletes who even need two full years anytime there's a meniscus or an ACL tear. He said this year it's been phenomenal to really see him blossom. He looks more confident, and there has been, as we alluded before, with the three-pointers from five, six, seven feet beyond the arc, there's nothing, uh, nothing from EJ Salatel that you know says he's hesitant or not confident. He's letting loose today. All right, some emails to get to. This one says, Go Beavers! Great first half and another great night of play-by-play. -play. Listening from Door County, Ty and Laura Gerber. That's Ryan Gerber's parents. Beaver Dam High School Athletic Director Ryan Gerber. Ty and Laura, thank you very much for checking in. We appreciate it very, very much. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, says, Hey, Mike, Ninja, Go Beavers! With a shout-out to EJ Salatel. Awesome game. That's from EJ's grandparents. They are sitting behind the bench. They sit behind the Beaver Dam bench at every game. They do not miss. And even though they're here in the field house, they email. As you can see, their gray sweatshirts they're wearing over there, Corey. <laughs> there we go. Right now. This email says, watching from Fort Collins, Colorado. The Golden Beavers are raining down three. So much fun to watch. Can't wait to see how far the team goes in the postseason. Excellent call so far. Love you. That's from... Uncle John, that's from you. That's for, it says, "Love you, Corey." Oh, from that's Uncle my John. Uncle. Yes, <laughs> your Uncle John. I, I misread that almost. Love you, Corey, from Uncle John. 
beautiful. Thank you, Uncle John. I appreciate it. He's in Colorado right now. Yes, so. that's what he said. Yeah. Yes. Go Beavers, Jeff Royne's grandparents. They're watching from the field house tonight. And, again, if you want to send an email, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us, sports at dailydodge.com. 30-16 to 16 at halftime, Wauwatosa West leading Baraboo. And I forgot to mention, stay tuned and for the post-game show tonight. We have a special event coming up. Um, it's going to be, and this is, this is something else. Um, I got a message the other day from Eric Halfman. His son, Ashton, made a bet with Beaver Dam School Liaison Officer Tony Carroll for the Badger-Marquette basketball game a few weeks back. Tony Carroll bet that Marquette would win. They didn't. So in order to pay up his bet, it's not money, he's gonna, he's, they wanted him to do a hot chip challenge, <laughs> but instead he, he's, he's too scared to do that. So he's going to do a hot wing. He's going to eat a hot wing, and we're going to broadcast it after the uh, conclusion of the, of the game tonight. They're going to do it right down in front of us. We'll put the camera on it. All right. The bet. That is quite the, the bet. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Beaver Dam's got the ball to start the second half. For you listening on radio, Beaver Dam's going left to right as we see it in the second half. Portage right to left. And this is Jens, and the lane floats one up. Wait a minute. Before the shot, we had an offensive foul. We're going the other way. It was an illegal screen. I didn't see what the. Uh, yeah, I can't tell if they're indicating he pushed off on the way up. Yeah, it was, it was hard to tell. Um, but Portage has it. So second half is underway. My name is Mike Tronson. Corey Sparks is my analyst tonight. Ninja, a.k.a. Justin Wilski, is here. Ember Wilski is here. And a layup is good. Vera. Elias Vera. Making it 42-17. And Jack Wilski's back at the 1430 ESPN studio. We were hoping to have two games tomorrow for you on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. Salto's human. He missed. He missed a three, and here comes Hooker. Leading the fast break to Vera, who tries to tip it up. No good, but he got fouled. And, boy, he got went tumbling to the floor, but popped right back up. And uh, Elias Vera will go to the line. Well, we know we have one for sure tomorrow, and that's the Beaver Dam girls taking on Pewaukee in a sectional final at Watertown. 4 o'clock tip, 3.35 pregame on Daily Dodge TV and 14.30 ESPN. And the first free throw is good for Vera. And if this score holds, we'll have the Beaver Dam boys game tomorrow night against the winner of that uh, baraboo Wauwatosa west game and that would be at 7 o'clock here in the Fieldhouse. Pre-game show around 6.35, 6.40 as the ball is knocked out of bounds, and Portage will keep possession. As of right now, we're in pretty good shape for having two games tomorrow, but, again, we still have almost 17 minutes of basketball remaining. What do we got now? Coach Official, Latteran just got teed he, up, he just got, Well, did he get teed up, or was he give him a, I think he gave him a warning okay. is what they did. Uh, I'm not sure why, uh, if he said something or whatever, but... This has been uh, interesting to say the least. We'll leave it at that. No love lost. Hooker up to Vera. Stout set a screen. Vera goes through traffic, puts a shot up. No, but a foul as it rolls off the rim. 16.43 left in the ball game. So we're a minute and 17 seconds into the second stanza. That foul was on Stoby, his third. And the team's second here in the half. First free throw is good. Got an email here that says, uh, watching the game in Naples, Florida. Go Portage. Uh, it says, number 22 is my grandson. That's from Dennis Knockreiner. Yeah, his grandson Michael's on the team. Second free throw is good. Hey, thank you very much for that email from beautiful Naples, Florida. Dennis, we appreciate you tuning in. And, yeah, I see your grandson Michael, number 22 on the roster. Portage now trailing 42-20. to 20. Again, send us an email, sports at Daily Dodge. Dot com. We'll get you on here before the end of the game tonight. This is Stoby. Parker Stoby firing it to JT Call high on the right. Looking down towards the corner. Salto, why not another three? Oh, and he got another one. EJ, somebody's feeling a little sassy tonight. And it's 45 to 20. Oh, he was human for a moment there. <laughs> not anymore. Didn't last long, yeah. did it? All right. This is Stout. They go around the horn. Hooker left corner three. Got it. Keegan Hooker knocking down a tray from the left corner. 45-23 Beaver Dam. 15-48 to go in the game. Jens to the top of the key. Stoby for three. No good. 
Long rebound, and Jen's got the offensive carom. Boy, Beaver Dam's done a pretty good job on the glass in this one. I don't have the rebounding stats in front of me, but that has been, uh, been apparent tonight. Call for a three. And it leads to stuff like that. JT Call, timeout portage. Brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaverdam. You can find them under the red awning. We're back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN. At Summit Ford Beaverdam, we are committed to serving the customers in our community, to bringing you into our dealership and making the buying process easy, fun, stress-free, and memorable. Thank you for choosing us and voting us Dodge County's best place to buy a new or used vehicle. Stop in today for a test drive and to see how we can help you find the car of your dreams. Summit Ford Beaver Dam. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. As we come back, Portage inbounding off their timeout. 15-22 and counting left in the ballgame. This Division II regional semifinal, 48-23 Beaverdam leads. Portage has the rock, though. And Vera looked out as he tried to split a double team and then fell down, lost it out of bounds into his own bench. Oh, there was a lot of traffic there. Uh, JT was on the scrum there. So the Golden Beavers will get it back. And this is Stoby leisurely trotting across. Something. There's an alley-oop. Salatel missed the shot off the backboard, but Call with a great alley-oop to find him. He just couldn't finish. And underneath the basket, reverse lift. No good for Garrigan. Call got the rebound. Ahead to Stoby up the left wing side. Underhands it back to JT. Return feed to Stoby along the left sideline right near his own bench. Fires it to JT, bounce, they're just playing catch over there. Now they go down to Mendoza, underhands it to a cutting, call! Call, coming down Wisconsin Avenue. Took the pass from Mendoza, Call gets the bucket. What a pretty dish from Mendoza to get it to him. And JT Call's doing everything. We almost had the alley-oop, we've got the rebound on the other end, and now he's going straight up the lane for a layup. 50 to 23, Beaver Dam. Not quite four minutes into the second half. Post, uh, post feed, there is a shot high off the glass and in for River Meyerdirk. That's his first bucket. Meyerdirk averages about four a game. And uh, he picked up a couple of fouls early, had to sit for a little bit. But here's Stoby for three. Line drive three. Parker Stoby. That's his first bucket. It's from the top of the silo. 53 25 Beaver Dam, 13 48 and counting left in the game. Three ball, Hooker, yes. And we've got another timeout called after Hooker's three, brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We're back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV, 1430 ESPN. Hi, I'm Josh Schneider with Silica for Your Home. We have a great feature available in our showrooms, our digital price tags. They search the internet every day and allow us to adjust the prices based on our competitors. That ensures you are always getting the best deal. If it finds a lower price, it will automatically change our silica price in real time. These digital price tags are all about saving you time and money. Shop silica for your home for the best sales, service, and selection. It's the President's Day sales event at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam. Hello, this is Brent Reed with the last call for all you Hemi Engine muscle car enthusiasts. The Hemi Engine is going away, but we got a couple of beauties that just arrived for some lucky buyers. Take five grand off a brand new 23 Dodge Charger Daytona RT and B5 Blue or a Challenger RTTA package in the beautiful and iconic Plum Crazy. For you SUV buyers, Jeep Grand Cherokee Limiteds with the black appearance package, only $46,678. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. All right, back to live action. Beaverdam with the ball, leading 53-28 over Portage. Mike Tronson, Corey Sparks. 
with you inside the BDHS Fieldhouse. And there's a pass down to the left corner for EJ. And Salatel drives in the lane, floats one up, in and out. And the rebound for Meyer Dirk. Boy, that was halfway down before the rim coughed it back up. Here's a little hesitation move. Now Vera off balance, shot in the lane. That's going to get the friendly bounce. Elias Vera making it 53 to 30. So the Beaver Dam leads at 23 as we're just about five minutes in now to this second half of this Division II regional semi. Blank. Bounce pass over to Salatel to a cutting Jens who tried to put on the brakes, almost traveled. Now gets it to call. Up to Mendoza again. He'll underhand to call, fakes a three near the top of the key, whips it down low, intended for Mendoza, but deflected loose, and then Jens gets it out to Blank. He'll try a three, no good. Rebound call, another offensive board. He'll try a three in the left corner. Yes! JT call. The shrug at the end, too. He's got five three-pointers in the game. He's up to 21 points, 56-30. to 30. Incredible. I mean, that's just insane, right? The inside cut by Mendoza. He caught his own teammate off guard. Ball gets jarred loose. He says, no worries. I will get my own rebound. I will go to the corner, and I will drill it myself. <laughs> that is Big three, and Hooker missed that shot, and the rebound for Call. Call's doing it all, as you said. He's the Swiss Army knife here in this game. A little bit of everything from JT, and, of course, he's a senior, so he, he wants to extend his senior season. Driving right baseline is JT. Underhands it to Blank. Parker Blank out to call, sidesteps the defender. Oh, thought he was going to launch the three. Parker Blank, one half of the Parker brothers, along with Parker Stobie, gets it to Saltel. Spin move, missed a shot inside the free throw line, and the rebound for Elias Vera. Vera, long pass ahead. Here is Garrigan into the left block, puts a shot up, got it, and a foul. Now, well, he was rewarded for being aggressive there. It's an old fashioned three point opportunity for Garrigan, who will head to the line and shoot one call, picked up his second personal. Yeah, and on the other side of the coin, Garrigan's one of seven seniors on this Portage team. They're going to do everything they can to fight and claw back these next you know, 11 minutes and 46 seconds here. Free throw's good for Garrigan. This email says, Sandy is watching the game tonight from my recliner. Go Beavers, Sandy Dre. We love you, Sandy. Thank you very much for the email. Sports at dailydodge.com. We'll get to another one here in just a moment. All right, 56-33. BD on top and with possession. Mendoza near the free throw line. Lob pass out to Salatel near sideline. Back to Cam, and Cam fires it high on the left for Freud. Back to Salatel off a screen for three. No good. That one a little bit short. Ball was going out of bounds, and Cole hustled. Swatted it. No, actually it was Freund. I beg your pardon. Saved it. And now here's a drive and a layup, no good, but a foul. I mean, the hustle by Freund to save that one, which looked like it was a lost cause and heading out of bounds. That's just, that's just phenomenal. And here's Salatel at the free throw. I'm just shaking my head at what Freund was able to do there. I can't imagine how happy Tim Laddern is just with that effort. We've seen JT Call do that a few times today. And now Freund following suit. And the first free throw is good for EJ. 57 to 33. This email says, shout out to my grandson, Donovan Devoney. Play your game, buddy. Love Grandma Kim. And Donovan, of course, is on the Portage team. Grandma Kim, thank you very much for the email. We appreciate it. Second free throw is good for EJ. I've got him now for 23 points. 58 33. Golden Beavers on top of the Warriors. Seven minutes gone by here in the second half. It's that 1-3-1 one, one again. And they, as I said, they will employ that from time to time. This is a bounce pass to the left corner. There is the aforementioned Navoni. They go around the horn left side. Bobbled, but Hooker, oh, he did lose it out of bounds. Yep. Yeah, he was having trouble corralling it, and he was tiptoeing the sideline, and that turnover will give it back. To Beaver Dam. 10.43 left. Again, the regional final is tomorrow night. And if Beaver Dam hangs on here, they'll be hosting tomorrow night. Likely it's going to be Wauwatosa West. They were ahead of Baraboo last we saw. Mendoza tried to go up with it, and it was actually knocked out of his hands by Hooker. But uh, Wauwatosa West is leading... 40-22 over Baraboo in their re regional semi tonight. 
being played down at Tosa. So if those scores hold, one here, one there, we've got a potentially big matchup tomorrow night in the regional final. Blank leaning in, got fouled on the shot attempt. Parker Blank will head to the charity stripe. And the foul was the first personal on Griffin Garrigan, team's second. First free throw is good for Blank. Parker Blank has averaged uh, eight and a half, nine points a game this year, 72% from the line. Two rebounds, two assists per game for Blank, who has uh, had a very fine sophomore season. One more for Parker, and it is good. Yeah, Parker's one of those guys, Mike, obviously with losing JT Call, he's going to join that backcourt and get some more minutes next year. So good to see him making an impact here in an important playoff game. Yeah, you're, he's one of the players whose role will definitely change next year. 10-12 to go in the ballgame. 60-33. to Beaverdam on top of Portage. And this is a pass to Garrigan high on the right. Back now to the near side for Nadolski. Nadolski to the free throw line, still on the dribble. Penetrates, layup, got it, and one. Now well, he a little hesitation move, but that's all it took. And he was able to draw the contact, so it's a three-point opportunity for David Nadolski. I'm looking at that Portage student section, all the neon over there. If the power goes out tonight, we'll know where the Portage students <laughs> exactly. are. Exactly, they will guide us. They will guide us if that happens. And the free throw's up, and no good. Salatel leaps to get the rebound. He just stayed in bounds, too. Throws it ahead to JT. JT call. On the drive. Underhanded shot. He's fouled from behind, and that foul is going to go on Warfield, who was chasing him. And Call got knocked down, but gets back up. He's going to go to the free throw line. Warfield's second personal third team foul. Here's JT at the line, and the first one rattles home. Wow. What a roll. JT call. JT 76.6% at the line this year. Seven rebounds, five assists per game. He's had a phenomenal season, his senior campaign. Next one is good. And it's 62-35. So Beaver Dam comfortably in front here with 9.40 and counting left in the game. And this is Warfield up to Nadolski, round the horn. They were going right side. Now that is Vera giving it to Nadolski in the lane. Ran into JT and called. It's knocked it out of bounds. I don't know if I expected this lopsided of a game. I, I'd be lying if I said I did. No, perimeter defense has been phenomenal, and obviously perimeter offense has been pretty good too with 62 points just halfway through the second half. They played their game. This is a drive. And now Vera in the right corner for three. Too strong. Rebound, Jens tracked it down on the weak side and finds Stoby. Stoby across the timeline. Back to Jeff Roy. He's going to go baseline, found a seam layup. No, but he got fouled. Now he turned on the Jets as he saw, hey, I got room there. There's nobody there. And the defense tried to close at the last second. And there's a foul call. That's part of having all of this success from three, Mike, is they're going to close out and play a lot tighter on the perimeter. That opens up space to drive baseline like that, and Freund took full advantage of it. Freund at the line, and uh, first one is good for Jeff Freund. Hey, I forgot to mention this earlier, but we, do we have the clock on the, uh, the yeah, because I can't see uh, Ninja's uh, video screen, uh, the, the laptop, but those of you that are tuned into Daily Dodge TV probably have noticed by now that there's a clock on the uh, scoreboard tonight, and uh, we're hoping to make that permanent as Freund gets the second free throw to go. We're hoping to get it permanent by next year, and actually, we were talking before the game, it's for sale, folks, any of you businesses out there. There's a pass to a cutting Meyer Dirk, who puts it in off the glass. Meyer Dirk scores, 64-37. No, in all seriousness, any businesses out there that would like to get on board with that, give us a call at the station. Blank for three in the right corner, no good. Off the back rim, rebound swatted around. It's going to go out of bounds, and ooh, I think he should have let that one go. I thought it was off of Portage, but 
That's all right. Warriors will get it back. Got a nice pat on the head from the student section as he went crashing into some Golden Beaver students over there. All right, here is a pass to the right corner. Three ball for Warfield. Yes, rainbow three is good for Aiden Warfield. 64 to 40. 24 point Beaver Dam advantage. 8.20 to go in the game. This is call. Left corner three. Splash! <laughs> I mean, oh boy, JT call. How many threes? He's got six triples. Six triples, my friends. And 26 points. 13 in the first half, 13 here in the second. Perfectly even. He's having a phenomenal day. Uh, when you're feeling it, when you're hot, you're hot, you know? Absolutely. What more can we say? Right. Hooker between the circles. Bounce pass over to Vera. 7.43 to go in this one. 67 to 40 is the score. And now a pass to Meyerdirk who penetrates and scores. Puts it up with the right hand. River Meyerdirk. 67-42 in favor of the Golden Beavers. Beaverdam has possession. Here is Blank into the lane. Blank backdoor pass. There's Jens wide open. Jack Jens making it 69-42. BD on top. 7-12 and counting left in this Division II regional semi. Beaverdam the number two seed. Portage the 10 seed. And there's it's call stripping Warfield three on two the other way. Pull up three, and it's no good. Oh, this place would have erupted if he hit that one. And now we've got a whistle as they were going for the rebound. I was a little surprised he actually pulled up and shot the three, but why not? I mean, he said he's been hot. Yeah, you could sense the anticipation. I'm looking here. He's currently at 26 is what we have him for. JT's career high happened earlier this season. It was 32. It might come down to how much longer is he in the game. And we got uh, some subs here as Beaverdam will inbound. Jackson Ladrin, the coach's son, inbounding, and the ball was tipped into the backcourt, but Freund tracked it down. Here is Freund, and the left block kicks it out. Three ball, blank. Got it! Parker Blank, his second triple. 72 to 42, Beaverdam by 30 with 6.35 to go. Here is Stout, and he'll hit the 17 footer. Jonathan Stout, seven points in the game, 72-44, Golden Beavers lead. Jackson Ladder, as I mentioned, had checked in, and we've got a whistle. What do we got? We're going the other way. That's going to be Portage basketball. This email says, go Parker and the Beaverdam basketball team from the Bergs. They're watching in Nashota, Wisconsin tonight. Let's see what else we have here. Shout out to Mason James, the manager for the Beaverdam boys from Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you very much for the email. By the way, the shout out from the Bergs was for Parker Stobie. They wanted me to clarify that, but I, I'm sure they love Parker Blank too, don't they? Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love the Parker brothers? Exactly. Parker Here is Square. Hooker for three. No good off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Matt Doyle. He's now in for Beaver Dam. They're starting to empty the bench. Max Lidke's about there. Also, Nick Krasinski has checked in, and so is Riley Doyle. So Beaver Dam's got, they basically emptied the bench up big with under six to play. Here's a ball stolen. And big collision bodies on the floor at the other end. Gergen was testing the waters. Yes. All right, we've got some fresh bodies out here. Let's see how they handle me just going straight downhill. And here ends a trip to the line. Here we got uh, Lily Euler cheering on JT Call. Thank you very much for the emails. The first free throws up, and it is good for Garrigan. Second one is also good. 72-46 in favor of Beaver Dam with 542 left in the game. And uh, three balls on the way. No good for Riley Doyle. Rebound for the Warriors. Three ball for Stout. No good. Missed it short. Rebound. Tipped out to the timeline, but going to be saved by Garrigan. And he'll give it right back to Stout. Stout near the top of the bubble. 
That to Garrigan, he's into the lane, but kicks it back out as he ran into traffic. Pass into the lane, and underhanded right out to Meyer Dirk. Three ball is no good. Lidke has the rebound. Here come the Golden Beavers. Post feed, Lidke there in the right block. Spinning against Meyer Dirk, and he got fouled. He got fouled. By the way, uh, that email from Lily Euler uh, for JT there. Thank you very much, Lily, for that one. Sports at DailyDodge.com if you want to chime in before the end of the game. It is getting late, so do it quickly if you're going to send us one. And Lidke misses the first free throw. Mike Tronson, Corey Sparks, high atop the bleachers here inside the field house with our entire Daily Dodge and ESPN crew. And they're the best around, folks. Second free throw, no good. And that rebound pulled down by Kreisiger. You're not too bad yourself, Mike. <laughs> you do a pretty great job. I, I, uh, if you hum a few bars, I can fake it. <laughs> Off-balance shot, and that's no good. But an offensive board, Meyerdirk off the miss by Hooker, and now we've got a whistle of foul on the Golden Beavers. Well, if anything, I've had a little practice over... Uh, I'm just wrapping up 27 years here. No, at, uh, good you are term. phenomenal, seriously. First voice I listened to when I started working here. I'm sorry you had to start at the bottom. Oh, no, no. Really that's hot. <laughs> you and Wade are phenomenal. Yeah, here's the front end of the bonus. It's no good for Meyer Dirk and the rebound for Matt Doyle. Well, I appreciate that, buddy. And uh, I tell you what, I remember being your age and starting in this business. And uh, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but it was. It was 27 years ago uh -huh. for me. And. And uh, to, to, to be in one spot for that long is, uh, I never would have envisioned that all those years ago, believe me. But it's been an absolute joy. I wouldn't have done it this long if I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, these are fun teams to cover. They really are. And it's, uh, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to do this. 4.14 to go. And here's a free throw line jumper. Pull up Jay is no good for Krasinski. Offensive board Litke out to Ladrin for three, and he misses the three. And the rebound, Meyer Dirk, and then he got fouled with 4.02 to go. Let's check this one out, see who they called it on. It's going to go on Riley Doyle, I believe. Yep. So it's going to put Meyer Dirk at the line. And he will shoot the bonus, front end. No good. Offensive board, Garrigan put back, no good. Got his own rebound. No, and he, he as he came down, he got tied up, and then they, they called a foul on. I was trying to see who he was pointing at. It was kind of tough to tell. It's on Lidke. 3.58 to go, and so we stay on this end. More free throws for Griffin Garrigan. First one is good for Garrigan. So ironic that last night I'm broadcasting at Portage High School. Tonight I'm broadcasting Portage here in Beaver Dam. Right. Second free throw is good. Then there's a Watertown game tomorrow. And, and I did Watertown, Watertown last Watertown night last against night. Beaver Dam. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up, folks. All right. The neutral sites are strategically yeah. placed. <laughs> they really are. I'm glad they're right in my backyard. <laughs> that is for sure. Now I've... I, I wish I would have kept track over the years of how many gyms, different schools I've been to to broadcast games because I've I've announced over 2,000 sporting events in 27 years. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah, and, a lot uh, of different venues, I'm sure. Yeah, as we've got a uh, foul on Beaver Dammer going the other way. Yeah, I should have kept track, but uh, there aren't too many schools in southern Wisconsin that I haven't been to. That's pretty uh, cool. That's There's a lot, believe me. And this is Hooker kicking it out. Meyer Dirk giving it right back to Hooker. He'll spot up for three. No good off the rim. And the rebound for Ladron. 3.20 to go in the game. 72-48 in favor of Beaver Dam. They lead Portage and will be advancing to the regional final tomorrow night. They're going to host it right here in this gym. Three ball top of the key. Too strong for Matt Doyle. And Meyer Dirk got the deflection. So Beaver Dam... That's the, uh, that's the good news. They're going to be playing tomorrow night, and they're going to host. Here's a deep three, and it's no good for Garrigan. Rebound tracked down by Nick Krasinski. The opponent, though, is going to be Wauwatosa West, and that will not be easy. 
And here is a shot off the backboard, no good for Ladder, and he tried a three, and it's going the other way. Wamatosa West, we, it's not a team that we see very often here in this area, be, you know, just for the fact that we're in different regions, but uh, they're really good. They're a number three seed. They could argue that they should have been the two seed oh, yeah. uh, over Beaver Dam. Great resume. And uh, do we have a, a, what do we have, a technical or something? I was looking down at the, uh, no, I'm sorry. It looked like he was going to shoot by himself there, but no, there's, the foul was on uh, Doyle, Matt Doyle, his second. And the teams, the Beaver Dam's over the limit. It's two the rest of the way here. And the first free throw's up and good for Garrigan. But yeah, Wabatosa West, they, uh, they, they're, they're a really good team. And they like to get up and go. They, their style is going to be very up-tempo, very physical. Uh, they've got at least one Division I player, I believe, on that roster, maybe two. Uh, second free throw, no good. As Portage now has started to empty the bench a little bit with 2.39 to go, 72-49. Three ball, top of the key, no good for Ladrin. Rebound pulled down by Max Kreisiger. Three ball in the right corner now, that is good. Donovan Navoni, did they give him two or three on that one? Was it, did he hit the, was his foot on the line? I believe they gave him three. Okay, I'm gonna give him three. Timeout brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings and Beaver, it was just a timeout to get some subs in is all it was. So we're gonna keep it right here as uh, both teams have pretty much emptied the bench now. Speaking of Navoni, it says, Go Portage, this email. And Donovan Navoni, your family is so proud of you. The Navoni family checking in. There's a layup no good for Beaver Dam. We've got the clock running with two minutes to go. And here is a pass and a shot high off the glass. Won't go for Michael Knockreiner. Trying to get the rebound, fighting for it. Knockreiner. And he was on his backside. They called a jump ball after all that. <laughs> they call a tie-up. The arrow says it belongs to Portage. Well, I tell you what, as more subs come in now, Corey, this was absolutely impressive for what Beaver Dam. I mean, I don't care, uh, you know, what Portage's record was or rivalry or anything. This was just a flat-out impressive performance tonight. And Portage came in hot, and we yeah. look ahead at this Wauwatosa West team. They're, they're big, too. <laughs> we talk about size. They've got a six foot eleven guy down there who can uh, put it up pretty easily. He's shooting 70% from the field this year. It should be a fun matchup if everything holds the way it is. And here's a three ball. It is short for Ricardo Yanez, who had checked in, 5'10 junior. Minute and a half to go. And Beaver Dam ahead 72-52. Stay tuned for our post-game show. As I mentioned, we're going to not only have Tim Ladrin up here for an interview, we'll have the final scoring summary, but we're going to have that uh, we're going to have that post-game feature or whatever you want to call it event <laughs> where we broadcast office police liaison officer Tony Carroll eating a hot wing to pay up on a bet that he lost. As, uh, they wave off the basket, by the way. Uh, again, if you're if you're stick around with us after we interview Coach Tim Ladrin on our post game tonight, we're gonna have a, a table set up down below us here, and Officer Tony Carroll is gonna eat a hot wing. He made a bet with uh, Ashton Halfman on the Badger Marquette game, the basketball game a few weeks back, and he lost. He bet on Marquette and they lost. Free throw, no good for Matt Doyle. And initially they wanted him to do a hot chip challenge, but he, he was too scared to do it. And so he decided <laughs> he would eat a really, really hot wing, and chicken wing instead, and that's what he's going to do. Now, Tony, he's probably not tuned in right now. Tony, my advice is don't enter, don't enter into a bet like that in the first place. If no. you don't want to, you know. He's going to have to do it in front of a decent crowd, too. <laughs> exactly. And uh, Owen McKinney on the drive there for Portage got fouled 42 seconds left. Uh, well, the other uh, thing I would say is just don't bet on Marquette. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> right. I, I just tease. I, 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 uh, I think it's hilarious, actually. It, it should be kind of fun as the first free throw is no good. I don't, uh, I don't generally bet on sporting events. Yeah. And, and that's why. Second free throw in and out. Offensive board put back. Not going to go off the rim. Rebound knocked around. Portage comes away with it, and they throw it into the backcourt, and, oh, they say it was deflected. It's not an over and back. Okay. 
30 seconds left. Oh, there's a steal anyways. Back the other way, Matt Doyle in for a layup, fouled. There was contact there with 25.3 to play. So we now know, we have for a little while now, that we're going to have a double header tomorrow on Daily Dodge TV in 1430 ESPN. And the first free throw is good for Matt Doyle. He also got the second one. 74-52. And we're going to call tomorrow Hardware Saturday yeah. because Beaver Dam, the girls can win a sectional championship. The boys can win a regional championship tomorrow. A lot on the line. Long three Ooh. counted for Ricardo Yanez. How about that? 74-55, two seconds left. And Beaver Dam will hold on, and that'll do it. This one is in the books. Impressive, to say the least, for the Golden Beavers as Beaver Dam has knocked off Portage in this Division II regional semi. Beaver Dam 74 and Portage 55. Congratulations to the Golden Beavers. They improved to 18-7 and seven on the year, and they advance to tomorrow's regional final. They're going to host that game here in the Fieldhouse. Meanwhile, hats off to Portage, head coach Darren Berger as they finish up 7-19. And, 19. and uh, Portage playing some good ball at the end of the season, but ran into a hot shooting Beaver Dam team tonight. Ran into a team that really blew expectations out of the water. We said it from the beginning. Wasn't sure what to expect with them having eight days of rest. Was there going to be rust? Well, as you said, Mike, there was absolutely, without a doubt, no sense of rust. Everybody was scoring. Lots of different three-pointers falling from various areas of the court. Everybody got involved. That deadly backcourt duo of JT Call and EJ Solitel combining for 49 of Beaver Dam's 74 today. Incredible. Anytime you can have the backups in a few minutes to go, that's a pretty good sign, right? That is, oh, absolutely, absolutely. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to step aside. We'll take a four-minute break. When we come back, we'll have our post-game show. We're going to have Tim Ladrin up here. Get some comments from him. We'll run down the final scoring, and we're going to watch a hot wing challenge. All coming up on the post game in four minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. The winter weather can play havoc on your hands and hair. Fear not, the folks at Wonder Nails and Spa has just a ticket for you. Call 887 4374 and let them pamper you. Let them chase away those winter blues. Let's talk hair. Long, beautiful hair. Shine and glint. Whoa, 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 I digress. The team of cost cutters will put a shimmer and shine to your mood, and their retail products are the best in the business. Call 885-0437 today. That's why you hear everyone say, I shop Park Village Shopping Center, and you should too. When it comes to a winning lineup, turn to the selection of new and pre-owned vehicles at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam. Their team goes the extra mile to provide a winning experience from hassle-free financing options to exceptional customer service. It's like having a dedicated cheering section cheering you on in every step of the vehicle purchase. Give the team at Napleton GM in Beaver Dam a call at 920-885-3301 or visit napleton151.com and find new roads with their winning inventory. Here at Pizza Ranch, we'd like to thank our Swedish friends for bringing the buffet to America. They called it the smorgasbord, but it was a success anyway. So we started our own buffet and loaded it up with pizza, chicken, sides, salads, and cactus bread. And you can even request any pizza you want anytime you visit. We call it Buffet Your Way, because smorgasbord your way, well, that doesn't rhyme at all. Pizza Ranch. Mmm, mmm. Check out your local Pizza Ranch in Beaver Dam, Watertown, or Waupon, or check out PizzaRanch.com. Chris Kladowski, Kladowski Real Estate. As a realtor, there is such joy in driving past one of our clients' houses that is now the place they call home. Be it a first-time home buyer, a relocation to our community, or someone upsizing or downsizing, we are passionate about the place you call home and meeting your wants and needs each step of the way. We sell the houses, you make it a home. Questions? Give us a call. 920-219-9212. Kladowski Real Estate, your trusted real estate advisors. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their Spirit Pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. 
visit Jerry's Automotive Center, WI.com, and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Cheer. Now cheer louder. Any accomplishment worth doing is worth doing with all your heart and soul. The entire team at Hometown Glass and Improvement knows that dedication, time, and respect can lead to greatness. When practicing free throws, running for a touchdown, or installing new windows and doors, it is commitment to something larger than oneself that creates a legacy. So keep cheering for your hometown team. Hometown Glass and Improvement, online at hometownglass.com. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental. If you've been unhappy with your smile, it's time that you come and see us. Our team of doctors are waiting to help you get your smile back. We'll take the time to talk with you and treat you like a member of our family, not just another number. Whether it's a whole mouth makeover or simply a little tweak, we'll find the right solution that fits you. For your free, no pressure consultation, call us today at 623-5559. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our Total Care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show. And we welcome you back inside the Beaver Dam High School Fieldhouse to our post game show. Mike Tronson with you on Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam, joined by Tim Ladron. He's the head coach of the Golden Beavers. Tim, congratulations to you and the boys on this regional semifinal victory. Uh, it was uh, an incredibly impressive performance tonight after uh, trailing 6 to 2 early. Wow, you just flipped the switch, 15-0 run, and you never look back in this one. Now, give me your overall thoughts. Yeah, I just thought we played really well. Um, you know, on both ends of the floor, it, you know, they, they throw a lot of different looks at you, and at other guys, and we worked on it pretty hard, and um, it, but we adapted pretty well to what they were doing, and um, you know, and sometimes some make or miss game at times, and you know, JT and EJ were rolling, and uh, we a couple of, had some guys find them, and. But really, as we talk about all the time, it starts on the defensive end. And I think we had a 15-possession stretch where they didn't score. Uh, we made that run at the end of the half. And, um, you know, the, when, when you can do that on the defensive end, that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, it, it, when you have guys going for a lot of threes, a lot of points like there were tonight, sometimes it's hard to forget. Yeah, I thought the defense was, was outstanding. I mean, you really did a great job. I mean, uh, they had two players in double figures, but everybody else you held down. Yeah, and, um, you know, again, we, you know, that, that big first half was huge for us. Um, you know, they, they, they made some nice plays to start the second half, and then, we, you know, they got, you know, closed the gap a little bit there, but I thought we stretched it out pretty good. Um, I tell you, like, I thought, our, I thought our scout team this week, we got um, Riley and Matthew Doyle, Eli Johnson, Cruz Arodi, and Nick Krasinski running scout team this week, and, um, boy, they had us ready, you know. It was an interesting week, you know, with, with Sock beating them twice during the year. You know, we were trying to ramp up, to be honest with you, for Sock. And when Portage played so well the other night, we had to shift gears quickly. And and, um, and, and with all the things they do de de defensively um, that are different than what we typically see, um, we did And then they, then they ran something different we didn't even that we weren't ready for. And but we adapted pretty well. But the, the guys did a good job of getting us ready on both the offensive and defensive end. They really ran their stuff well in practice, and uh, our guys are ready to go. Boy, offensively, uh, I tell you what, uh, EJ and JT yeah. were just absolutely – let's talk about JT first of all. I, 26 points. I have him for six three-pointers. And not only was he scoring at will, it seemed, but he was getting rebounds. He was setting up his teammates. He was he's throwing alley oop passes. Yeah. He was he was like a Swiss Army. He was doing all. He was you know fighting for loose ball. I mean, the guy was doing everything. Well, yeah, you know, it, it's a funny thing when it comes to when it comes to the playoff time in seniors, right? I mean, um, you know, JT was phenomenal. Uh, you know, Cameron was unbelievable in the middle tonight. You know, didn't, that's didn't score a ton, but you know. 
uh, found open guys, was great on the glass, and physical presence for us. And, and Jack, and the, you know, he struggled a little bit there finding a shot for yep. a little bit. But, you know, he knocked down four three th- free throws, which was pretty big because Portage had a lead early. And that, that was pretty good momentum shift for us to get the four free throws. I think we scored on the, on the inbound there too. And, uh, but he was great defensively and a good leader for us and, and great on the glass. And, you know, it's a turn the times about. You rely on those seniors, and seniors did a good job. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. You, you already pretty much touched on it, and that is, you know, early in the game there was the, uh, the technical foul, and then Jack Jens hits four free throws. Um, and to me that was a huge turning point very early in the game. Yeah, and you know Jack, 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 Jack was in that spot a couple of years ago where I think there was a tack or a double tack, and he made six in a row. And you know, it, 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 you know, he goes up there and makes the first two. And I was like, you know, I mean, we've we've got some pretty good free throw shooters on our team, but it's like, well, go ahead, you know, <laughs> you're rolling, hit the next two, and he he knocked him down. And I think, yeah, I think there was a big turn of momentum there early because you know they came out, they hit a couple long threes early, and and you know, and kind of shocked us pretty quick early. You know, Stout hit one, I think. Uh, maybe two hit the other one, but, um, I, yeah, I mean, Jack Jack hit those free throws and then kind of got us a little bit of momentum there, and then we made that big run. Well, it was a, you know, it was a battle. It was a physical game, and, you know, I, probably nothing you're not used to because, obviously, you haven't played these guys in a while, but the games that in recent years when you played them were similar uh, in style. I think. Yeah, but th- this is where the Badger Large has, has really tested us and, and made us better and because um, it was a physical game, but it wasn't anything that we hadn't seen, and yeah. to be honest with you, um, you know, the size and the large is, is bigger than that. And, and so when you get that physical play, um, and they're good. They, you know, they, 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 were, they did a good job on Tuesday to get here. And you got to give them credit for that. They made, good, they made shots. They defended well. Um, and we, you know, we did a good job of, of you know, doing the right things and, and taking care of things that we needed to. Tomorrow night, regional final here in this barn. And I didn't see the final, but I, I, Wauwatosa West was up pretty big. <laughs> Uh, you're going to play Wauwatosa West tomorrow night, and yeah. uh, let's talk about them a little bit. <laughs> well, they're large. <laughs> I mean, so they're going to start 6'1", 6'4", 6'5", 6'5", 6'11". And athletic, get up and down the floor, can fly around. And I know we talked about it before. You know, the computer seating probably helped us in that one. Um, you know, they had, took three losses to three really, 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 really good teams out of state. Um, you know, they play in in, in a – Mostly Division One conference with Marquette and, and Sussex Hamilton and those guys, and so um, yeah, I mean it's it's going to be a tough one. And but our guys will be ready for it. Um, you know, we Tuesday we spent we spent some time on them on Tuesday uh, just to kind of get us a little bit ready for what we were planning on doing against them, and um, you know just to try to get a little bit of a head start. That's the nice thing about having the buy is to be able to do some of those things, um, but. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great challenge. I mean, we, we've seen a lot of size this year, but we haven't seen that kind of size and, and that kind of athleticism. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be tested. You know, obviously uh, our size will be tough to match up with them, but, you know, I know our guys will, will, will be gamers, and we're going to come out and we're going to give them everything we got. I was, uh, I was jokingly thinking to myself during this game, Boy, I hope you saved a couple of those threes dropping the night for tomorrow night because yeah. that's one way to beat, uh, you know, shoot over the top of them. Yeah, well, and that was part of the thing, too, at the end of the game there where, you know, I think we, we pulled everybody about seven minutes yep. left. Just yep. we knew we were going to need legs tomorrow night and yep. with their size and everything else. And, um, you know, and our guys at the end, they battled. They did a good job. They had a hard time putting in the bucket, but they defended well and kept us, you know, kept us where it wasn't an issue. And I uh, was happy for those guys. But, yeah, we, we need some legs for tomorrow. So. Certainly going to be nice to have that game here. I mean, yeah. you know, that's that's going to be big. For yeah, for sure. And, and you know, that, um, hopefully we get a big crowd out here, you know, get, get you know get to the girls' sectional final and hustle on over here after that one, and, and hopefully we can get a big crowd because, uh, yeah, that's, it, you know, I think we can make that a ball game. And, 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 you know, with our guys and what we, you know, what we've been able to do this year, you know, they've been tested. We've been tested. Um, it, I, I I like our chances if we can put them in a ball game for sure. We will be here tomorrow night. We're looking forward to it, Tim. Congratulations to you and the boys on this victory, and we'll see you in a little less than 24 hours. Yeah, sounds good. Appreciate it. All right, that's Tim Ladron, head coach of Beaver Dam, joining us on the postgame show here tonight. Beaver Dam a winner, 74-55 over the Portage Warriors. And as we look at the final individual scoring from this one for victorious Beaver Dam as they improve to 18-7, and They were paced by J.T. Call. He had 26 points. He leads all scorers in the game. Six three-pointers for J.T. 
E.J. Salatel, monstrous effort tonight. 23 points, 18 in the first half, five more in the second half, and he had five three-pointers in this game. It was Parker Blank with eight. He had a pair of triples. Six points for Jack Jens, including those four big free throws early. Meanwhile, it was Parker Stobie with a triple. He finished with three, and we had several players with two points each. Jeff Freund, Cameron Mendoza, Max Lidke, Matt Doyle, all with two points apiece for the Golden Beavers. Now, we have the scoring for Portage. Elias Vera led the way with a dozen, including one from downtown. As we bring uh, Corey Sparks back in here, Griffin Garrigan also in double figures with 10. Nine points for Keegan Hooker. He had three triples in this game, as we'll turn uh, Corey back on here. Just running down the scoring, Corey. Seven points for Jonathan Stout. Six points for River Meyerdirk. And rounding out the scoring, Donovan Devoney with a triple. He had three. Ricardo Yanez had a long three at the end. And Aiden Warfield had three. Portage finishing up at 7-19. and 19. So it's going to be Beaver Dam and Wauwatosa West tomorrow night. But uh, I tell you what, before we... <laughs> Before we resume here, we got a whole <laughs> crowd of people down in front of us, including most of the players. Now, again, what we're gonna we're gonna do this right now, and I'm gonna read again what uh, what I was sent earlier, and from Eric Halfman. So it says here that uh, Tony Carroll, police liaison officer for the Beaver Dam Schools, made a bet with uh, with Eric's son Ashton on the Badger Marquette game in December. Tony is a huge Marquette fan. Ashton follows the Badgers. Marquette lost the game, and so the the original bet was the loser had to do a hot chip challenge, and um, but Tony was a little afraid to do that. Tony Carroll, so he decided he would eat a hot chicken wing and wear a chicken costume while doing it, and that's what's happening right now. Is we're going to zoom in on? We've already zoomed in down there. Officer Tony Carroll's got that hot wing, and they're they're putting some more oh. hot sauce on it. Oh no. And, uh, oh, my goodness, somebody get the uh, the hose ready because this is uh, – yeah, here we go. He's, yeah, he's eating right now. Turn to the camera, Tony. <laughs> we can see your facial expression. It's going on right now. So, I, I, I tell you, Corey, I'm, I'm a little – a little surprised he's he's doing well so far. Maybe a delayed reaction. It's a de- yeah delayed <laughs> reaction here. We give it about thirty seconds and he might be sprinting for the this, water fountain. This again is a lesson for you why you don't bet on Marquette, <laughs> <laughs> or at least when they play the Badgers, anyways, goodness. right? Oh yeah, Tony, yeah, my goodness, I'm I'm impressed here. He's uh, he really hasn't uh, shimmied or shaped. Yeah, look up this way, guys. <laughs> yeah. What are the odds he was building up his tolerance the last couple Well, yeah, and I'd like to know what kind of a training (laughs) regimen he had. some hot sauce in his cereal. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, this is. Good sport, though. I'm impressed. Uh, Now, I I didn't ask, or maybe I didn't didn't look closely, but, you know, how hot are we? Are we talking ghost peppers here? Are we talking, what are we talking here as far as, and it looks like they're sprinkling more (laughs) hot sauce on there. There we go. All right. Yeah, apparently we didn't put enough on there is what what I'm thinking. They're thinking what you and I are. He doesn't have enough of a reaction. Oh, you would like more. Okay. The (laughs) Halfmans want to see him suffer. I mean, that's what they want to see is uh, Eric and Ashton are down there with Tony Carroll. I like the outfit, by the way. I wish he'd turn around. Tony, turn around, face the camera. Yeah, we got you on camera up here. I'm impressed, buddy. It, it, it's, oh, he says it's not good. So how, how hot are we talking here? Oh, oh Carolina Reaper. Carolina Reaper, okay. Wow, I tell you, he's he's really done oh, remarkably well. He's shaking his head. And Well, okay, they're wiping his brow here a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I, I told you earlier, Corey, I've, I've done play-by-play here in Beaverdam for 27 years, mm. but never have I done play-by-play of a hot wing challenge. <laughs> this is a first for both this of is, us. This is a first. <laughs> and uh, I, I tell you what, I, I, I expected a little more discomfort. Let's yeah. put it that way from, from Tony. So either it's not as hot maybe as we thought it was going to be, or maybe he has more tolerance than we gave him credit for. Yeah, Tony's taking it like a champ. I am... Yeah, wow. I'm, I'm really impressed. I can't say I would do the same. I'd probably be yelling. Right I now. thought he would be <laughs> writhing in pain here. You know, you know the, the cartoons where they, they breathe and the fire comes out of their yeah. mouth because they just ate something that's really, really hot. Those old Looney Tunes. Well, he's done well. Wow. Tony Carroll, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I, tell, I have newfound respect 
for Tony Carroll as they give him a round of applause down Tony's there. The basketball How about team. that? Yeah, yeah. Wow. way to go, Tony. And now, okay, he's going to give Ashton a hug. Well, I tell you what, that is, uh, if that isn't the highlight of your Friday night, yeah. I don't know what is. What do you think, Tony? You survived. I, I have newfound respect. <laughs> newfound respect for you, buddy. Oh, I see some tears. Okay. Okay. There, okay. Yeah. I guess I, <laughs> I, we see a few tears now, a little. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I, I have newfound respect for you, buddy. I really do. Well, I tell you what, it's folks. Um, they will not forget this anytime soon. And it did go final. Wauwatosa West over Baraboo, 76 to 45. So that is it. It's Wauwatosa West. And it's Beaver Dam tomorrow night. So our doubleheader tomorrow is set. I'm going to call it Hardware Saturday. Yeah. You've got a sectional final and a regional final. Let's set it up for you. So tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock, the Beaver Dam girls basketball team battles Pewaukee in a Division II sectional final at Watertown. We're going to have it for you on Daily Dodge TV in 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. Coverage beginning around 335. We'll have the tip at 4 o'clock. And then I better hustle after that game back up here to Beaver Dam because I'll have a lot of equipment that you're going to need. As uh, tomorrow night we've got the Beaver Dam boys playing Wauwatosa West here in the field house, and that's going to be a Division II regional final. 7 o'clock is the uh, tip time for that one tomorrow night and a pregame show around 6.40 or so. Uh, but both of those games tomorrow on Daily Dodge TV and simulcasting on 1430 ESPN Beaver Dam. I'll be in Watertown in the afternoon for that one, and I'll hustle back here so, Corey, you and I can get the uh, night game on the air. Um, it's going to be a fun, fun day. Big, big matchups, lot on the line. Beaver Dam trying to get back to the state tournament for the first time in four years, and the... Boys are going to try and get past a very good Wauwatosa West team to get to sections. A lot at stake, yeah. Beaver Dam, it'd be their first time since 2020 when I believe they were stopped at the semifinal, right, for state. So this team is looking at that and saying we would love to get back to that spot. Pewaukee's been dominant this year, and we already know how dominant Wauwatosa well, West is. Well, 2020, can be. actually, they qualified for state that right. year, but that, of course, it was canceled, right? Gotcha. Okay, you so meant the, you the final state four. Semi. Yeah, yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it should be a, an action filled night. I will say the bar was set very high today, though. Uh, especially by these boys. So, yeah. So what a game this was. What a performance by Beaver Dam as they win it 74-55 to against Portage. And, uh, again, join us for a doubleheader tomorrow if you can't make it to either of the venues. So a question for you. Why do teenagers play high school sports? Well, some participate for a sense of purpose. Some play to inspire others, and some for the friendships they develop. Very few mention that they participate to get an athletic scholarship because they know that less than 2% of all high school athletes are awarded a sports scholarship. Well, whatever the reason for playing, student athletes enjoy all the benefits of playing, including making better decisions. That's a message from ESPN 1430, Daily Dodge TV, and the WIAA keeping the education in sports. And staff and students of the Beaver Dam Unified School District value our community and know that giving back matters. All of our schools are actively engaged with the community. And uh, our staff and students provide thousands of hours in community service each year. From staff and students at our elementary schools to clubs, organizations, and teams at our middle and high schools, we are learning together and giving back together because it's the right thing to do. 74-55, Beaver Dam a winner over Portage tonight. That's going to wrap it up. And uh, before we sign off, let's again thank our presenting video sponsors, Hometown Glass and Improvement, Columbus Family Dental, and the Beaver Dam Unified School District. Tonight's game also brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Kladowski Real Estate, Slumberland, Silica for Your Home, Summit Ford, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Park Village Shopping Center, Preferred Dental Partners, Jerry's Automotive, Air Care, Napleton GM and Beaver Dam, White Construction, and Pizza Ranch. Corey Sparks, thank you for joining me tonight. Yeah, Do thank appreciate you for having it, buddy. me. What a blast. That was uh, quite an impressive performance, and uh, we'll do this again all over tomorrow. So uh, appreciate having you here. Ninja, a.k.a. Justin Wilski, he is our heart and soul of Daily Dodge TV. He's the best in the business. Ninja, thank you for all you do. Our on-site videographer and engineer, Ember, thank you as well for assisting, and Jack Wilski back at the studio 
on Bill McCullum, Way, and Beaverdam. Thank you for engineering our radio simulcast. For the Wilskies, for Corey Sparks, Mike Tronson saying so long from Beaverdam High School. Have a pleasant evening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. This has been a Daily Dodge TV and 1430 ESPN Beaverdam Sports presentation. Good night, everybody. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show.